Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Crate and we're working on Blossom. Okay, we're on to the next page. Um, this is pretty simple. Um, you've seen something similar, but um, it always looks different depending on the, the designer paper you use. You're gonna start out with a six and a half by eight, six and a half by eight. You're gonna score a half inch on the six and a half inch side. And it's just going to get installed to the left hand side of the pocket page. Flush with the edges, like so. So now we have our first flap. Okay, and then on top of that flap, or actually centered on the opposite side we will have a uh, six and a half by seven. Six and a half by seven, you're gonna score a half inch on the six and a half inch side, and it's gonna be centered. So I'm just gonna put a quick uh, mark here on the center line. And I'll do the same thing on the flap itself. The center should be three and a half up from the edge. Is that right? Seven, no. Yes, three and a half inch up from the edge. And then we're just gonna line up those two tick marks. There we go, pretty simple. And now we are going to add two more flaps to this top flap, and they're gonna be centered. This first one is five and a half by six. Five and a half by six, you're gonna score half inch on the five and a half inch side. And we're gonna find the center for this. We also want to find the center, and it's actually already marked on this side. And find the center on the second flap. Okay, so we have a decision to make. We've got these two flaps, and they're gonna close like so. So the smaller flap is gonna be on the inside. So um, because we already have kind of a large flap here, I'm trying to decide, do I want it this way or this way? And it doesn't really matter. Um, or does it? No, it doesn't. So I'm gonna put the smaller one in first. The smaller one is five and a half by six. Score half inch on the five and a half inch side. Find your center on the flap you're applying it to and the center on the flap that you are applying and go ahead and put it in. Now, I went ahead and marked the center line on this one, but really what you're gonna do is on this flap, you're gonna line it up with this flap. So um, you don't really need to do a center line. They should overlap just like so. So again, I'm gonna use that top flap to line this bottom flap, the larger flap off of. There we go. So it's gonna open like so, and then this whole flap is gonna open like so. Lots and lots of photo space. Now we need to get some magnets in place to hold this all nice and tidy. I'm gonna place a magnet here and here.
And then we're gonna use a set of magnets to hold this all closed as well. got this that opens and then we've got this that opens and then this so lots of space okay that's it so the next time we get together we will start decorating this hey everyone it's Daphne from scrap and create and we're working on blossom and we are on page three I did just double check and we're on page three and that's Nola jingling in the background and we all know and love her so I'm going to set some of these paste papers aside. So we have this, this, and then this. And I'm going to pull in page two so you can see the continuity. So this is also... Oh, I hate, I hate that I can't remember this, but I'm pretty sure this is from the 8x8, 12x12 collection pack. So we're going to start with this. I'm going to get my um, contrast paper under here. And we're going to make sure it's inked and ready to lay down. I'm going to set aside page two. Right, here's my ink. It's not, so sorry about that. And the ink pad is Powder Puff, and we sell them in our shop. Um, and this is called Mahogany. And it looks really ridiculously dark, and then when you put it on, as you can see, it's not, it's not too dark, at least not for the graphic collections. I wouldn't use this on a, a paper collection that had a true white background. I think it would be too strong. Anyway, I love it. It's my go-to color. They have many colors, but I just, there's a couple of things I figured out. Um, if you're gonna make a lot of albums, like I do, and not everybody does, um, you're gonna narrow down the number of colors you want your base album to be made out of and the ink you're gonna use. So as it stands, I use black, white, and cream, and occasionally craft. Those are my base album colors. And it turns out the, uh, the ink I was using or was talking about works with everything if you're not, if you're careful, careful. But a lot of times if I'm um, doing a white album, I don't ink the edges because I don't think you really need to because there's not that harsh change from the core to the base. So if the base is already white, I don't think you have to ink the edges. That's just me. This is eight by eight. This is from the eight by eight. And of course, when you set them next to each other, it's obvious, but I want you to know that so you're not figuring that out after you trim some paper.
Okay, we need to trim this down just a bit. So we need, to, I trimmed it down side to side, but also top to bottom. So one of the things I do, and I've mentioned it before, but if you're new to the channel, I know it's frustrating to watch me do this trimming, but um, what I tell you uh, in the cut list is the black card stock and not the designer paper. And I do that for a couple of reasons. One, I think you're going to get the best result by actually fitting and trimming. I don't care who you are. It's just gonna give you the best possible result. Um, when you put a score line in something, you can't predict how much smaller or shorter or larger it's going to be. So I'll give you the cardstock measurement which is this piece and then what I do uh, as I'm paper planning and people ask me this about planning as paper planning I cut every single piece of my designer paper to fit the cardstock exactly I don't trim it down so that it's perfectly mounted until I'm ready to actually glue it down so in this case this is a six by six panel, and this is a six by six piece of designer paper until I'm ready to trim it down. So I don't wanna tell you that ahead of time because I hate for you to do that and then regret it. So it's just kind of how it works with me. Um, if you have a six and a six by half, six by six and a half inch flap and half inch is scored and folded over, it seems like you need a five and seven eighths by five and seven eighths, but it doesn't always work that way. And if you become an experienced uh, album maker, you'll you'll recognize that that's true. But to preserve the paper so I don't cut through it later, I know it's a six by six panel, so I'll start with a six by six, even with a designer paper, and I'm okay to shave off an eighth of an inch in the height and width. So that's kind of my th philosophy on it. And it's not, not everybody likes it, but I think it is the best philosophy and it prevents you from cutting through paper and preserving the largest piece of the paper and only shaving off just a sliver if you need to. Okay. Well, I'm going to set this aside for a moment because my husband just got home and I'm going to fix him some dinner. Um, but this is going to go here and then we're going to fold it back over and finish this page. But it'll be in a few minutes. All right. Okay. So, like I said, this was six by six to start with, but then we shaved off a little on the top and the bottom to make sure it fits with a nice even mat all the way around. We're gonna glue it down and then I'll finish the rest of this when I get back. Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and I had to take a break. My husband got home, we had dinner and now it's time to continue this page. So this is where I left off. We hadn't trimmed it off, but I, I did that while we were away. So now I'm ready to lay it down. Okay, so let's put some glue on this. We're on page three. Sorry, the glue got a little clogged. Okay, page three, sorry about that. Right. So 
been a really interesting rainy day here, which is unusual for us. Not for everyone, but for us. We don't get a lot of rain. And actually a little hail, too. So that was kind of interesting. So this is the main look. Now the next thing I want to do is lay down these two strips which go top and bottom and they don't actually go on this flap or this flap, they go on the base flap here. So we do need to trim them down just a smidge. See, I trimmed one and then we'll check it and then we'll do the other. It's actually not quite enough, I don't think. Yeah. Just to be clear, I'm going to use my paper to make sure that you can see what I'm doing. So this goes like this and this, and that's a flap, and then this is a flap. So we're working on the right side. We glued down the very front panel. We're opening it up and then we're placing these two strips inside of that. Okay. Just want to make sure that's clear and it's not easy to see with black on black, I know. We're going to put one on the bottom and one on the top. And to make it easy, I'm going to flip the entire thing around so I'm not going to pull my head across the screen. I'm going to bring the paper to me, which I recommend everyone does that, whether they're recording or not. You don't have to move over your paper, move your paper to you. Okay, so there we go. To the main elements, they're not very large, but they are, you know, it takes a little effort to put them in. This closes, this closes like that. And this pattern pulls the next page in. So there's the pattern from the opposite page. 
So it's always important to kind of have some, con well, I think it's important to have continuity across your pages. And even if you don't decide to do it across your entire album, it's important to have continuity at least across the two pages that are open at the same time. And that is my um, design philosophy. But it works. I think most people like it. Um, it's not for everyone. So, speaking of which, we have this. And we have this pattern here. So I need to pull that pattern back in. And I'm going to do it right here. Okay. And it doesn't cross both pages, but it doesn't need to. The important thing is you get that continuity across these two pages. And one of the reasons it doesn't cover the whole page is I don't have enough of this pattern. But if you're careful about your flaps and planning, you can get that sense of continuity even if you don't have a full piece of paper. And that's what we're doing here. We're planning to make sure that when all the flaps are closed, you still see a continuity of patterns across the spread. Okay. Oops. So there you go. And here is page two and page three. So you get, you get the sense. So these two go together. And this goes with this, and this goes with this. So you get the idea of the continuity across the two pages. And that's how I plan my pages. Not everyone does it that way, but that's how I do it. So basically I pick three patterns per page, and that's one, two, three, and you see it here, one, two, three, or actually one, two, three, and this is the accent. And as you can see, it's not a main piece, it's just a strip, and this is the insert. So that's how I do it. I pick one, two, three patterns to spread across two pages, and then I pick an accent, and that's this. That's how I plan my books. Not everyone does it that way, but that's how it works for me. So there it is. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, not done yet. We'll be back to finish the B-sides of this, but I did want to get this much done uh, before I knocked off for tonight. We'll see you tomorrow. Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and we are working on page three and I've got the most of the B-sides, well, I say most, some of the B-sides uh, planned out and so we're gonna go ahead and start getting some of these laid down I might have to take a break and organize a little bit More but we're going to go ahead and get these couple of pieces in Before I accidentally repurpose them. Okay, this is from the 12 by 12 collection pack and this is from The 8 by 8 And of course we had put that down earlier so it's already glued into place. I guess I should take the cap off. Got this is going to go in here.
Okay, I'm gonna pause real quick and I'm gonna line up uh, the paper for here. And then we still need to um, do this little feature. So I'll be right back. Okay, I think I've got uh, everything that I want laid out. So we're going to have this pattern here on the outside. Then we've got the same pattern um, going on the inside. This is from the 12 by 12 collection pack. And this is from the eight by eight. So the two outsides are from 12 by 12. The purple is from the eight by eight. side for now. So, make sure that's dry so it doesn't stick when I close it. Okay, now the last piece here goes here. So this is the last section we had uh, to cover and we've got this pattern over here and I really want to bring it back in over here, but my corners turned down a little bit, but I don't have a piece big enough. So I'm, I'm trying to decide if I want to uh, just create a simple color block here with two pieces or if I want to use a different uh, color piece of cardstock here altogether. So I'm giving that some thought. I, I don't have any more of this paper left. Well, that's not entirely true. I have this much left, which is not much. Um, and it's still not gonna be enough to help me cover the rest because uh, these pieces are too narrow. I'm gonna shuffle real quick and make sure I haven't set aside a piece that I missed. But I think I'm gonna have to go with something else because I, yeah, I do, I think I've cut through all, all of this paper, which is unfortunate. I still have some of that pattern, but it's in the eight by eight and that's been the 12 by 12 and I don't think that looks very good. I don't like the way that flows. So that means we need a different solution. And that seems a little bit busy. It could work. I wish I had some more of this paper. But alas, I don't. So I am gonna, I'm gonna mull this over for a few minutes. And while I do, uh, I'm gonna pause. Okay, I went through my scraps and this is what I've decided to do. Um, so this is a scrap left over from previous and so is this, it's a trim piece from 
something I did earlier in the book. So, and I, I really wanna pull that pattern back in. I'm disappointed I don't have more of this, but we're gonna make it work. Um, and I, th I still think it flows very nicely. So I'm gonna lay this down and this just happens to be a scrap that I had already. And it turns out that it's two and one eighth inch, two and one eighth inch wide and six and seven eighth inches tall to go here. So I'm gonna utilize this strip that I had left over. Some of the color blocking is because I just like the way it looks and other times in this case it's necessary because I don't have a piece, a coordinating piece large enough to cover this panel. Okay, so now I'm going to dry fit this and mark it and we're gonna add this blue and then that is gonna be it. For page three. So there's our complete spread. And I'm happy with that. I think it actually looks very nice. So there, you still have this nice large uh, photo space here. Um, let's see, what size is this? So this is a little bit larger than four by six. So you could easily get a four by six on here. You could do, ouch, two four by fours. No, you can't, because it's only seven inches tall, but you could do a four by four centered. Um, but I'm happy with the way that turned out. And then of course you've got room for photos here. Either way, you could even put a nice big five by seven here. Okay, so this closes, this closes, and then we've got this spread here. So um, I am going to add an ephemera card here, but I'm not sure which one. Um, let's see, page two, okay. So this page two, page three. So let's pick some ephemera cards to go on the covers. That's one. That's a, it's a bit much, I think. I think I'm kind of liking this blue just because um, I want to bring in a something besides pink. Uh, let's see. This is the other one that I think works well just because that flower is in, in on both sides. So I think I'm gonna add that right here. And then on this side, I definitely wanna put an embellishment on here. I think it's gonna be chipboard. But I think I also want to add a journaling card here, which I'm not sure yet. Let's see what the backs look like. Just try to decide placement. Now I'm gonna mat this in black cardstock. Originally I was thinking of mounting it right here and having it be a little bit taller than the pocket just to further define this space, but I'm not sure I like that. I'm not, it's, it might be just a little too pale. That, that gives it a completely different look, doesn't it? When you flip the cards over. This 
would be a good companion to that. And actually, I think I would turn it upside down. <laughs> Maybe not. No, it's too obvious that it's upside down. This is kind of nice, too. It pulls the blue back in. That's the right side. That was not obvious to me. I could almost do them. Uh, I don't know. Okay, I'm going to fool around with this, but you guys are going to see it in the walkthrough because I need to get this video completed and uploaded. So I am going to put some ephemera cards here to further decorate that both, both sides. I just don't know what yet. And after I put either a sticker or a piece of chipboard here, I may decide not to on this side, but this side definitely needs something. It's just too plain. So I'm going to add an ephemera card to this side. And then also um, previously I had, from one of the larger pieces, I had fussy cut some of these um, floral arrangements that I'm probably gonna feature um, throughout when I go through the embellishment process. And the, the stuff that I fussy cut that I just showed you came from the 12 by 12. Um, yes, it definitely came from the 12 by 12. Okay, well, that's it for now. That is, of course, page two. And then we just finished page three. And I'll add some embellishments. And you guys will see those in the walkthrough. Thanks.